Do you have $20,000 lying around for a new GPU? Because if so, NVIDIA's got something to sell you. Hey folks, welcome to another mini episode of Upscaled, our technology show, where we break down the tech that makes your gadgets faster. This is another kind of unplanned episode. I've been griping about how we haven't had any concrete GPU announcements this year, and behold, NVIDIA just announced a new card, the A100. Except calling this a GPU may be a little bit of a stretch. This card is really intended for AI processing and scientific computing. Still, the A100 is also based on NVIDIA's long-rumored Ampere architecture, and it may give us a hint as to what we can expect for GeForce gaming cards later this year. Quick context if you're unaware, graphics cards are by their nature designed to do a limited set of operations really fast and in parallel. Like the math needed to display the million plus polygons your typical game uses in each frame. Folks also realize this design could be used for processing huge amounts of data much faster than a CPU, and they started plugging graphics cards into servers and supercomputers. And that's really what this A100 card is intended for. NVIDIA is planning on selling these as part of their DGX A100 system, sort of a pod that links eight of these graphics cards together and can be slotted into a server and sells for $200,000. Yes, $200,000. But NVIDIA is saying it'll be worth it because of the performance these A100 cards can deliver. So let's take a look at the card itself. The A100 is based on the new Ampere architecture, like we said, and it's also manufactured on a seven nanometer process. Now this we expected, NVIDIA's current cards are a 12 nanometer process, but moving to a smaller manufacturing process should improve energy efficiency and should let NVIDIA cram in more transistors on each chip, and cram they did. NVIDIA claims the A100 packs 54 billion transistors into an 826 square millimeter die. Transistor count can sometimes serve as sort of a rough proxy for performance, and for current context, NVIDIA's current gaming flagship, the 2080 Ti, packs 18.6 billion transistors onto a 754 millimeter die. A big factor in chip cost is actually just the size of the die. Not only does pure silicon cost a lot, the bigger the die, the less you can manufacture at one go. 826 millimeters is enormous, so no wonder it costs so much. So what does this tell us? Well, the A100 may be potentially as much as three times as fast as the current flagship 2080 Ti, and that by moving from a 12 nanometer to seven nanometer manufacturing process, Nvidia has massively increased its transistor density. In fact, it's gone from 24.6 million transistors per square millimeter in the current generation to about 65.4 million transistors per square millimeter. Such a big increase that I am frankly worried that someone did their math wrong here. Maybe being AI specialized really let them pack in the transistors on this chip? But comparing the A100 to the 2080 Ti is probably the wrong call. NVIDIA is really setting this up to be the successor to the V100, another data center GPU they released in 2018. Now, the V100 was a pretty impressive GPU in its own right and retailed for $9,000. And even today, two years later, in some applications like AI training, it's still plenty speedy. But NVIDIA says the A100 will be 20 times faster. NVIDIA is also claiming the A100 will be as much as 20 times faster at inference. Now, training, when you feed a bunch of data into an AI model to help teach it, that's been using GPUs for a while. But inference, where you then take that model and use it to analyze new data or make predictions, is still sometimes run on CPUs. Impressively, the A100 also boasts 19.5 teraflops of floating point 64 performance, which is about three times AMD's just announced Radeon 7 Pro. Now, remember, a teraflop is essentially trillions of math per second, and and floating point 64 is a special computer number system that's very high precision and can handle huge numbers, which is perfect for things like physics simulations or complex scientific models. A lot of software uses floating point 32 or so-called single precision math, but things like AI training can actually get away with much lower precision, 16 or even sometimes 8-bit though those models may still have to deal with a huge range of numbers. To solve this, the A100 introduces a new computer number system that NVIDIA is calling TensorFloat32, which is supposed to combine the number range of floating point 32-bit 
with the accuracy of 16-bit. Essentially, it can handle a lot of different numbers, but doesn't care a ton about precision, which can be useful for some AI systems. And NVIDIA says it should speed up calculations without having to change any code. Interesting if true. Of course, all that processing speed doesn't matter if the card can't move data fast enough to analyze it, but with 40 gigabytes of HBM2 high bandwidth memory, capable of moving 1.5 terabytes a second, I think it'll be okay. NVIDIA also says that some of the speed up in AI work comes because the card can recognize what's called structural sparsity. Now bear with me, and apologies to any actual computer engineers out there because I am really going to simplify some things. A lot of AI training is really about taking data and categorizing it. Let's say you're building a program to recognize cats and dogs, and the program codes cats as a one and dogs as a two, and everything else gets coded as a zero. That's all good and fine, but when you set that program loose on, say, all of Google Images, you're going to end up with a lot of zeros. Or for another example, if you were building a database that could predict customer habits, and you were basing it off of their buying patterns, maybe you would enter a number for the amount of every product in a store that someone bought. But every product they haven't bought gets marked with a zero. This is essentially, basically, on a very simple level, how AI training works. All of this data gets put together into a giant matrix, which is essentially like a huge Excel table, and this is what you actually use when you're trying to make your inferences or predictions with a machine learning model. And these matrices frequently have a lot of zeros in them, and in sparse matrix math, the card is smart enough to essentially leave out all the zeros, which if you're talking about a data set with millions or billions of entries, can really not only speed things up, but make the calculation require a lot less memory. I don't know, it's all linear algebra. One of my first science videos I ever did was on linear algebra and I haven't recovered enough to do another, so let's move on. Now when I said $20,000 a card up top, that is a guess. NVIDIA hasn't said yet. But these DGX A100 systems, in addition to eight of the A100 graphics cards, will also pack in about 15 terabytes of fast NVMe flash storage, a terabyte of RAM, and two 64-core Rome AMD CPUs. And add that all together with, we're saying, maybe about $7,000 for the fancy interconnects to hook it all together, and you're left with about $160,000 for those eight cards. It also all adds up to an AI processing system that is capable of about 2.5 petaflops of single precision AI math. So what do these cards tell us about NVIDIA's next graphics cards? Well, this Ampere design, they are positioning as the successor to their Volta architecture. But the thing is, Volta never really spawned any consumer cards. The RTX gaming graphics cards that NVIDIA currently sells are actually based on another architecture called Turing. Volta did introduce Tensor Cores, specialized hardware for doing AI math, that did find its way into consumer graphics cards. And it's possible that the AI improvements we're seeing here in Ampere will also make its way into gaming graphics cards, maybe to help with AI-based upscaling like DLSS, or to improve denoising, which is a huge component of ray tracing. A GPU the size of the 2080 Ti and with the density of the A100 would probably pack in 50 billion transistors and be twice as fast as that card. And that's frankly insane. I also bet Nvidia would love to shrink down the dies on its high-end cards and save some money in manufacturing. For example, AMD's admittedly slower 5700 XT is about a third the size of the 2080 Ti. Some recent, very unconfirmed leaks do suggest that the possible 3080 Ti will have about 30% more cores than the 2080 Ti and be about 40% faster, which is really pretty in line with what we expect from a new design and a new manufacturing process. Assuming Nvidia doesn't do something like massively expand the number of Tensor and RT cores on these chips, that probably points to about 26 billion transistors, which at the density we're seeing with the A100 could probably fit on a fairly reasonably sized 450 square millimeter die. Now, will a smaller die actually mean GPU prices go down? I wouldn't bet on it, but we'll see. I promise we'll be back with some more science-y episodes soon, but we are trying to keep up with all of these PC and GPU and CPU announcements as they are coming fast this spring. In the meantime, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.